Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. So, this is part three of <laughs> Carol Baskin Gets Rescued. Um, so, this video is delayed, obviously. It's in like two weeks, two and a half weeks. Because I haven't been able to make this intro and the ending for it. And I've kind of been busting my butt. So, if you'll look behind me, I don't know if you can tell much going on. That's the garage door. The garage is clean. We have a place to build our, first of all, 300 subscriber special, which I'm going to show off in just a second, and hopefully the F100. So, um, we, we actually have another plan for the F100, a little bit of a better one, because we didn't realize how small this garage was until we really got it cleaned out, and it is pretty small. So, we already have another plan for that, but we don't know. Well, that's still in the works, so, regardless, um, I want to show off this 300 subscriber special build real quick. So, um, originally it was going to be an ATV, and um, I bought an ATV, and it needed a lot more than I thought I needed, and it was going to cost me a lot. So instead, I bought this. <laughs> so, this is different from anything we've ever done. This is a go-kart, obviously. It had these kind of junk tires on it that I have you using as a jack stand right now. And, um, yeah, one wheel peel, boring car. So, the plan for this is to live axle swap it. And, um, we're, we're debating right now on ordering an axle online or just, uh, because we already ordered the, the Predator 212 that we're going to be putting on it. And the clutch is actually already here. The clutch came before the motor. And, um, this is the clutch right there. Everybody go car clutch. So we have that. Uh, when I bought it from the guy, he had a chain with it. Chain does not work at all. But um, yeah. Anyway, this is the garage clean, by the way. We can like work in here now. So you're probably seeing a lot more videos in here now, which is going to be awesome. So, uh, but regardless, live axle swap for this. And. Um, yeah, I kind of already worked out a lot of the kinks, so the kinks being the tires, I got these off of a um, set of hand trucks actually, and put them on there, and then the steering was nowhere near even straight, the wheels are pretty much dead center now, and they need to be, the brake was all bent up and stuff, I fixed the brake pedal, I got a throttle cable ran, because it didn't have one of those, it did, it's a little bit screwed up, and this one is. But I'm hoping that I can make something work. So yeah, I'm making progress. Um, this actually came off of a push mower. I don't know. It came with it. The guy gave it to me with it, and it came off a push mower. So whatever. It snapped into the little thing there. You know, like it was supposed to. And I think I can just kind of make the rest of it work. Hopefully, if not, I'll come up with another solution. But I should be able to make that work. Um, but yeah. Live axle swap this because one wheel peel is just boring. And um, the way that it was, I'll I'll showcase it in its own video. But the way that it was was all wonky. But there'll be there'll be a video on this coming out, so don't worry about that. But regardless, guys, yeah. So that's what's going on in today's video. We are gonna pretty much finish painting, and do some more fiberglass work. Um, yeah, same thing we've been doing really, just until this project is done. So. This video and the next video, the next video is probably going to be the last entry to this. So, yeah. Without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so late last night, I went ahead and fixed these holes. But it looks like this there was water puddled up in that this morning. And I think it's something about the angle of this boat. I think there's some excess water in the hull. And it's kind of building up through there. So, I don't much know what to do about that. But not all of my resin is hardened. Um, some of it is. And I almost wonder if I didn't put enough hardener in my second batch. Because I think I had a lot more. And I don't think I put enough hardener in it. So uh, that could be an issue. It's just it's probably just going to take a lot longer to harden. So, uh... Yeah, but all my little places, well, no, I did these last. I'm pretty sure I did these with the second batch. 
Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up this JV water weld here and uh, go ahead and start putting it in some of the places. So right there is where I'm going to start. I'm pretty sure yeah, this didn't do anything. So, basically what you do, you just want to have to just pull off a, just pull off like a pinch of it, that right there. And just knead it with your fingers and mix it in. Then you just want to kind of pack it in there. I mixed up more than I needed for this one hole because I have two more over here that I'm going to go ahead and do. Okay, I don't know how long we we'll are able to make this last, but basically I'm having trouble getting this resin to harden. So I'm going to go charge my camera and uh, see if I can get some more stuff to harden here and go from there. Okay, so I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that I figured out why my resin will harden. I figured that out. bad news is, is that the answer is that I mixed up the batch wrong uh, so this one parts of it are hard parts of it are not hard and um, yeah that has to do with the way that I mixed the resin so I went on I went on YouTube and on Google and I've been looking this up for a couple hours now and yeah that's definitely my problem here so I already recoated this side with a apparently a good coat because this is all nice and dried uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up a new batch and just recoat this whole side right here. Try to, you know, lay it out the same way to where it's a nice edge all the way across. And, um, yeah, I'm going to fix that one spot over there. And then I'm going to wait for my JB weld to dry that I put on up there. And a couple of little spots everywhere that I wanted to just kind of fill in since I've got to wait another four to eight hours for this to dry. So I went ahead and said forget it, we'll go ahead and put some JB Weld down, worst case scenario. You know, this thing's not getting done anyway. And my county just got down on lockdown. So I'm not sure that I can even take this boat out whenever it's done. So, yeah. I'm gonna show you how to mix up some resin now so that you know the right way to do it and you don't make a huge mistake like I did. Alright, so what are you going to need? I would go down to Lowe's and buy you a 99 cent paintbrush. That's what I would do. I'm not doing this for art. I'm doing this for purposes. Every video online about mixing up resin is about art. So, I'm going to show you how to do it, I guess, for a boat. Uh, or whatever else. So, you want to put this in your little... If you bought the brand I bought, it comes with this. 
So what I do is I just coat the inside of it with this tin foil because it makes my life a lot easier. I can just pull this, damn it, and just pour it. Anyway, basically get the stupid tin foil in there. All right. Now that you've got it covered in tin foil, what I do is I don't want to mix up a whole bunch of this stuff. Because I try not to waste, and uh, if I mix up more than I need, I'm wasting it. So what I like to do, and you can measure this if you want. So the ratio on this is six tablespoons of resin to one quarter to one quarter tablespoon. Or I'm sorry. All right, so six tablespoons of resin with one quarter teaspoon of hardener. Okay, that's the ratio. Uh, it's a little wild to think you only use that much hardener, but that's it. That's the ratio. And um, but I don't need that much. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is six tablespoons of resin basically fills up this whole thing. So if I fill it about halfway full, like that. And I do an eighth teaspoon of hardener, which is about half of this thing full. Pour it in there. And then I'm good to go, right? Now, here's where I messed up. I did not mix this thoroughly enough. That ratio is pretty close to being right. Alright, so I don't think I got the ratio wrong, because there are parts of it that are hardened. Okay? So, 99 cent paintbrush at the hardware store. And there are ways to clean this lacquer thinner, acetone. So, you want to just kind of mix nice and thoroughly. And just make sure that you get everything off the bottom, off the edges. Everything, alright? So, I'd say mix for about, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. And the thing is, is that a lot of people say to pour it versus brushing it. And while that might work in some cases, in our case it really will not work. Because we're trying to deal with, you know, small pieces of this boat at a time here. So, now that you have your resin mixed up. Uh, all right, we can get on with the plying. Now, I've already done the, I guess the hard part with the fiberglass cloth, but basically want to just put it where you need it. It's not, this, this part's the easy part. So. Somebody were to ask me what's the easy part of fiberglass, I would say this. This is the easiest part of it. Alright, so just kind of coat the old stuff with a new layer of resin. I know that it probably doesn't seem like the most correct fix, but it's better than the alternative. The alternative is just taking it all up and starting over. And um, yeah, I'm sure none of us really have the time or the want to do that because. Especially on something like this, it would be super messy. A lot of the videos that you find where they say to do that is over artwork. And when you're doing something like artwork, obviously, worst case scenario, you just have to start all the way back over. This is a boat. Uh, 
I wish I could just start over, but yeah, I kind of sort of can't. So, you know, I'm just kind of stuck with what I got. So I, I mixed up more than I needed. I knew I would have. I knew I would have more than I really needed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill in some of this to make it easier to sand. And I wish I could explain to you how to mix this up to make it easy to sand. I, I can't. I'm sorry. It's just a matter of doing it and experience that will basically teach you how to do this. And uh, get it to where you can sand it and it not have bubbles and stuff in it. But this does pretty good about self-leveling. As long as you put enough of it on there to where it can self-level. Self Alright, so I want to add an eye bolt to this end for an anchor because there wasn't one for some reason. Uh, that was a hole. Filled it in with resin. Sanded it already. Sanded all that this morning. There was this. That was a huge crack. There was a small crack there. Um, small cracks all along here that have been partially sanded. Not really all the way because, like I said, it wasn't hardened. Um... And I'm going to kind of just put some JB Weld on it for now. I had to fix that. That I actually originally put resin on. It did not dry like normal. Um, this here. Those were them two holes. But I did show that. One up there. Same thing. There are actually two wires poking through. And there's one right here. Where well, there's two wires poking through. But I can't get them to poke back through the boat. So. I'm just going to ignore them. Two more cracks over there. These two huge corners. Uh, that, this one, this rung here had cracks in it. Uh, that little spot right there. That huge spot up there. That little spot right there. That little spot right there. There's one over there. Right there. And then the top edges of it, they had little minor imperfections in them. And then these up here, you can't even see anymore. There were cracks there, and I have I epoxied them and centered them flat, and it worked just fine. That was one of the coats of epoxy that it, I'm guessing was just fine, because one of them was one of them was good, because one of them went on just fine. I had to end up mixing up another one about midway through there, and I think that second coat is what really ended up screwing me over, because I don't think I mixed it thoroughly enough. But um, yeah. There was a bunch of places to fix on the front of this thing, and I want to get it all very uniform. Uh, the bottom I didn't work super hard on, but that was because I didn't have the right sandpaper. I actually went, and this was the sandpaper I was using. It was 120 grit. Don't know the brand, uh, but I went and got some 80 grit Craftsman. This stuff, that stuff sanded this like nice and flat. There's a little bit of a high spot. It was already a high spot. It's gotten expanded somehow. But uh, there was a crack there, and it's you can't even hardly tell it's there anymore. You don't know that I know. Plan to keep it that way for as long as I can. Till the truth comes out and your conscience is not even a
Alright guys, so I want to thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, awesome. Good for you. Go ahead, drop a like and subscribe. You know you want to. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, next episode, we should be getting this thing pretty much ready to launch. Um, and there will be a, kind of a crappy first launch video. It's unfortunate. It's kind of what I had. Um, I don't even know if I'll post it. Uh, we may go make a first launch. <laughs> But, um, anyway, this thing does end up having a trailer attached to it. So, if I do end up redoing the first launch, it'll be a, it'll be with a, it'll be with a trailer attached to it. So, um, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Like I said, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If there's something you didn't like, you know, editing style, whatever, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what it is. And, uh, that way I can improve myself. So, yeah. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.